Welcome back to the Pylon Cam YouTube channel. Um, so I shaved this mustache today, and I'm not going to lie, I kind of feel like a problem. I'm feeling like a huge problem. It ain't much, but it's honest work. I mean, I swear, I swear to God, it took me about two months to grow just this. And if I didn't screw up when I was shaving, I would have grew it into like a Hulk Hogan type deal. But anyways. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so that's, you're probably wondering if you've watched this channel for a little bit. Why is there a baby crib over there? Well, part of the reason I shaved my mustache is because... I mean, I'm not, not going to become a DILF being a dad. I mean, that would just seem pretty... Pretty ignorant and irresponsible to my kid for him to grow up. And if he watches these videos, he'd be like, Dad, like, you look like a fat turd and you didn't look chiseled and didn't have a mustache on the internet. And I would argue that he'd be right. He would absolutely be right if if he watches this video and, and sees that. But now he can't say that because DILF, check. Mustache, check. A problem, check. Anyways, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's talk about some running backs. Um... Yeah, I mean, I wanted to plug my Twitter in, especially because I've been trying to be more involved on Twitter, uh, because I've just been posting question, like fantasy questions that are just popping my brain. And I feel like I, I've just been putting polls so we can be more interactive with each other. So if you want to go check out uh, Twitter, it's at pylon underscore the, uh, just random stuff that pops in my brain. It's fun. I mean, just hit me up, talk to me. Check, you could hit me up on Instagram. The Instagram's kind of been lacking. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, pump through everything and get everything back into where it needs to be. But it's a one-man show, so I can only work as much as I can on uh, one thing at a time. So do with that what you will. But anyways, let's talk about some top 10 running backs. So I actually thought about this when I was kind of – feel like creating this this video is that I feel like it would make more sense to put these players whether they're wide receivers tight ends running backs anything into tiers because I mean I could come up here and say D Dalvin Cook could finish as the RB5 and Jonathan Taylor may finish as the RB6 but at that point like their points could be so close that it would make more sense to put them to categorize them into tiers rather than Rankings. So I'm, I'm thinking about doing that in a later video of just doing tiers for each player or each position group so that it makes more sense of who to target rather than split hairs between, well, this guy said he was the RB5 and this guy said he was the RB6, so who should I take? I just think the thing you need to focus on or look for in fantasy players is opportunity, which equals to or leads to volume, which then leads to points. And I feel like these players that we're looking for in the top 10, as in your first round picks, are... Opportunity, which leads to volume, plus high skill set equals the max potential output. Um, but I just wanted to say that before we go ahead and talk about the number 10 player on my list. Coming in at number 10, I have Leonard Fournette. And I think that Leonard Fournette is like criminally slept on this season. Um, his, his role in the Tampa Bay offense has not changed. He has, he, before he got hurt, he was the RB3. Finishing the season as the RB3, then he got hurt. Finished as the RB10 in standard, uh, and finished as the RB6 in PPR formats. Right now, he's the RB13, which, I mean, I don't know why, to be completely honest. Uh, I mean, you could be saying, like, Mike, you have him as RB10. It's not much crazier. But, like, his floor to me is RB10. His ceiling is, like, RB5. The, thing, the reason why I have him as RB10 is because I'm worried about his health. Um... He saw 84 targets in 2021 and caught 69 passes. He only played for 14 games, and he finished as the RB10 with 10 total touchdowns. Uh, I just think that with Godwin gone, Tom Brady being back, he signed a massive contract this year. His injuries weren't super severe, being that they were just three separate ankle sprains. I think that he has the potential to definitely finish inside the top 10 as a floor. And you could potentially get... Leonard Fournette in the third round, which is insane. With Chris Godwin being hurt, there is reports that he could be back as soon as 
uh, week one. But there's also reports that he might not be back until December. So being that he's coming off, I believe, an ACL tear, um, screwed up his knee. I mean, he's gonna he, whatever he has. If I'm forgetting off the top of my head, if it's an ACL tear or whatever the injury may be, he's not gonna be back for a while. Those targets, I'm thinking through that. You know, you have Mike Evans, right? And then you have Russell Gage, who's brand new to the system, and you don't have anybody else. Like, you have, what, Tyler Johnson to f- eat these targets? All of these targets are going straight to Leonard Fournette, who now has no competitions. The others were Rashad White, but he's not there to catch passes. Leonard Fournette just signed a three-year massive contract to catch passes. Leonard Fournette is in one of the, the literally the best positions in football for fantasy. He's going to consume all of Chris Godwin's targets, being that he's sidelined for at least, I'm saying at least September. I think further than September, but at least September. And in the la- in 11 out of 14 games, he saw at least five or more targets. So I'm all aboard Lenny Fernetti, your mom's spaghetti. I'm not nervous because I'm drafting Leonard Fournette on my fantasy team if he's available. Coming in at rank nine, I have Saquon Barkley. Now, I picked this picture in specific because me and Saquon are just piecing out all the haters. Like, I'm so tired of people saying, oh, well, Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley's injury prone. I had him the year he tore his ACL. I had him the year uh, uh, he sprained his ankle. Those same people, trying to keep it PG, those same people will turn around and draft Christian McCaffrey one over one without even thinking about it. I get it. Saquon Barkley tore his ACL, right? And then he came back and had a bad year. Well, it's not uncommon for players to come back from ACL tears and have a bad year. That's why I'm fading J.K. Dobbins this year, which will be in a different video. For Saquon, finishes the RB34 in standard and the RB30 in uh, PPRs and PPR formats. This year, he's ranked as the RB12 and going at 24 overall. I think the biggest thing that needs to be understood, and Giants fans will understand this more than anybody else, there was not a worst a worse coaching staff or offensive scheme in the entire NFL than what the New York Giants dealt with with Joe Judge, Jason Garrett, and whatever you want to call that, because I'm not going to call it an offense. Running QB sneaks on third and nine, that is not an offense, Okay. Every report I have read, and I've been reading reports as much as I can about all these players, all these teams, the thing that sticks out to me and why I'm putting Saquon in this list, first and foremost, I got a new head coach of Brian Dayball, who was the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills, who had, who has one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL. Now the Giants offensive coordinator is Mike Kafka, who was part of the Kansas City Chiefs, another explosive offense. Everything I've read about Saquon Barkley is he is going lining up everywhere. They're moving Kadarius Tony to the backfield, Wandale Robinson in the backfield. They're putting everybody in all of these different spots, and Saquon has been seen and reported lining up on the outside and running multiple, like a good amount of deep routes. So I think Saquon's ceiling, as in like why I am so attracted to Saquon this year, I don't think he's going to be the same runner he was in 2018, 2019. I don't think, I think those days are kind of gone, and I could be wrong about that. But the value in 60 to 70 targets... Being that this is one of the most injury-prone wide receiver rooms in the NFL, I think they're going to use Saquon way more in an Austin Eckler type role, potentially seeing if everything goes well. I think he could have a 15-touchdown season. Say uh, Austin Eckler finished with what, 20 touchdowns last year? I think this is two years. I think it's like a perfect storm for Saquon Barkley being that the offense is getting revamped. He's two years removed from the ACL tear. And he's in a contract year. So he wants to... And I think he does want to stay in New York. So for him to come out and want a ball for New York and give them a reason to sign him or salvage whatever contract negotiation power he has going into 2023, I think this is the year where Saquon is going to come back and show everybody he could still be 2018 rookie 2,000-yard rusher or uh, 2,000-yard player Saquon Barkley. The next player I have on this list is DeAndre Swift. And this is kind of someone I've gone back and forth on where I've moved him around the rankings being as high as five and as low as outside the top 10. And I landed on eight because I think his floor is... He is kind of like 
what people wanted Saquon Barkley to be, he's just been more healthy. And the thing is, he really hasn't been that healthy, which is kind of why I'm very hesitant on DeAndre Swift, but there's a a lot more reasons why I like DeAndre Swift than I'm scared of DeAndre Swift. The reason I was scared of DeAndre Swift last year was those murder reports that he was involved in a murder case. Those came, he wasn't involved, but that scared me off of Swift last year. This year, it's like, I kind of am starting to think like, yo, is he injury prone? Being that like, what worries me with running backs is the shoulder injury, right? And I've tried to list in the in these, you know, spiels that I got up here. Like, he's recovering from a groin strain, which is fine. But for me, it's more the AC joint strain, uh, sprain, excuse me. The shoulder injuries are what really kill running backs because it limits their impact Potential, like the, the way they absorb impact, if that makes sense. Um, but like if, you, if you're looking at me, who you're probably like, this kid has a mustache and he's yoked. He's obviously a problem. I wouldn't say the same thing about DeAndre Swift. I don't look at him and see a mustache. I don't look at him and see traps like this. Like, I mean, it, he's behind a third best offensive line in football, according to PFF. I just think Swift's value is in that he's so involved in the passing attack and he was on pace to finish as the RB3 last year. The situation's got better. Jamison Williams will come in at play at some point and he's going to demand to take that, like the defenses play him honest, which is going to open up the middle of the field for DeAndre Swift, which is why I think, you know, Swift does have a very high ceiling if he plays 17 games and he very well might. And if he doesn't, He still finishes the RB15 last year playing 13 games. So I like Swift a lot, but I do understand the hesitancy to draft DeAndre Swift. And what I would say is I think you have to understand the value in these players, whether you want them on your team or not. People are going to look at DeAndre Swift and be like, damn, that's my guy. And he drafted him before me and they're going to overpay for him. That's kind of how I look at some of these players that I'm going to highlight as we go through this list. But there are some of them where I'm like, I don't like them that much. But I know people like them more than I do. It will overpay me for them, for these players. I think DeAndre Swift, he is a player where I want him. But I'm definitely okay selling DeAndre Swift for the right price. The next player on this list is Dalvin Cook. And Dalvin Cook, to me, is the best version of Saquon Barkley and DeAndre Swift. The thing that is insane to me about De- uh, Dalvin Cook he arguably might be the most efficient running back in fantasy history. He finishes the RB2 one year playing 13 games. That's kind of insane. Um, He finished 2021 as the RB16 in standard and RB16 in PPR. Uh, This year, his ADP has him as the RB6, seventh player overall. Um, I, I think there's a few things that keep me away from Cook this year. The new head coach, I don't know, like the Rams, when Kevin O'Connell was there, you, we saw them utilize Malcolm Brown, uh, Daryl Henderson, and Cam Akers, Cam Akers rookie year. I don't know what they're, like Alexander Madison is, I have been a huge Alexander Madison fan for literally as long as I can remember, because if I have Dalvin Cook and he gets hurt, I know that Alexander Madison is coming in with an auto 20 bomb. Like, every week Alexander Madison plays, I am just happy because I know that that's one position I don't have to worry about because he's a bucket. With Dalvin Cook, like, he is a top-volume player when healthy. This is a new-look offense, so I have no idea what his volume— If his vo- I think his volume might regress being, I think they're going to try to pass more. And, the th- like, the thing is really the most— the thing that keeps Dalvin Cook at 7 to me is he's recovering from just last year. In 2021, he suffered from two ankle sprains, a dislocated shoulder, and a labrum tear. That is something that very limit, like that, if I was a coach, like I'm trying to keep, like I'm trying to, he's our best player, arguably, besides Justin Jefferson. Like, I don't want to put him in harm's way as much as I possibly can when I don't have to. And that's where I think Alexander Madison might come in this year and steal some of these garbage time touchdowns, some of these fourth quarter drives. Like, I don't know if the Vikings are in the driver's seat to win games. I can't, like I don't think I you could promise yourself that Dalvin Cook is going to be in there like he was the past X amount of seasons. I do think that they might switch off from Cook and try to limit him in a sense of keeping him healthy, being that he has suffered so many injuries and had two shoulder injuries this past year, which are very, very tough for running backs. 
I like Cook, but this is a player where I'm like, I'm drafting him to trade him. Being that, that could be a very real strategy, and it's something I've done before. Last year, I drafted a Christian McCaffrey knowing that I didn't want him, and I was able to trade him early on into the year for Jonathan Taylor and De- uh, David Montgomery, which was like, obviously going into this year, nobody would do that trade, but it's, again, understanding the value of a player and having the foresight to see the potential value in other players. Now, I'm not saying I knew Jonathan Taylor was going to be the RB1, but I did know Jonathan Taylor was going to be at least an RB, like in the inside the top 10 conversation, and that's how I was able to, you know, get away with murder, so to speak. At RB6, for me, I have Joe Mixon, and Joe Mixon is a player that I have been very high on since last year. I actually got clowned in one of my drafts with all my buddies for taking Mixon over certain players, and the reason why Joe Mixon seemed like such a no-brainer play was it was during the conversation of do we draft Najee Harris or not. And a lot of people were speculating like, oh, he's going to see 25 touches a game. He's going to see X amount of targets a game. Da-da-da-da-da. The same thing. Like, all you had to do was look at the, the next team in the division and you could say the same exact thing. Like, Joe Mixon was in a position to get 20-plus touches every game, being that their next up back was Samaj P. Ryan. Do you think a guy named P. Ryan is going to take any touches away from anybody? No. His name is P. Ryan. He's probably the most hated person in Cincinnati, and because he was like, I mean, if you watch the last play of the Super Bowl, he gave zero effort for that ball, which was a catchable ball, potentially. But anyway, Mixon finishes the RB3 in standard, RB4 in PPR in 2021. This year's ADP has him at the RB7 and 10.3 overall. I think that Joe Mixon's situation only got better. The offensive line improved. The skill position players did not change. The offensive system did not change. The only thing that changed for the Bengals is they got better on defense and their offensive line got a lot better. This is like Joe Mixon is primed for another repeat year. The only thing that scares me is he only played 16 or more games one time, and that was last year. We see what he's done when he plays a full season. Does he do it again? I don't know, but the volume and workload is definitely there for Mixon to take off in 2022. This might shock people, but I have Eckler at uh, RB5, and my reason being is, you know, Eckler finished at 2021 as the RB2 in both formats. His ADP has him as the RB3, 3.3 overall. Uh, here's my concern with Eckler is one, he's kind of fragile Two, they drafted Isaiah Spiller and I'm not worried as in like, Oh, they're going to split 50 50. But my thing is, is I have a top five pick. Do I want to draft someone who might get goal line carries taken away from them just because Brandon Staley wants to do that that day. And for me, the, the only thing in my brain that I'm seeing and I'm just cannot, you know, look away from is like Isaiah Spiller is going to have a role in this offense. The Chargers have wanted a goal line back for however many years you look back. And they've had vet, like many failed experiments. Joshua Kelly, um, I forget the other guy, but they always come back to Eckler. Isaiah Spiller was a in the RB1 conversation going in like right before draft season. He fell because he's so one-dimensional and he can only run in a straight line. That's all they need him to do in these short yardage situations and in the goal line situations. I think Eckler is still going to be a fantastic play in fantasy. He is arguably the most important player in the Chargers offense that's not named Justin Herbert, but he's not going to finish with 20 touchdowns again. And he finished as the RB2 behind Jonathan Taylor, only playing 16 games. But my thing with that is... We're going to talk about Jonathan Taylor in a second. This was one of the worst years, an RB like statistically for an RB one, ever in fantasy. Um, but yeah, I like Eckler a lot. This is a player that you might be like fishing for trade value. But I think if I were to draft Eckler, I'd hold on to him for the season, personally because I have very high expectations for the Chargers going into twenty twenty two. This is a player that I think can finish as the RB one this year, um, and that is Najee Harris. Najee Harris in 2021 finishes the RB4 in standard, RB3 in PPR. His ADP right now is the RB5, 6.3 overall. Um, The most important thing for me is he's reportedly 244 pounds. And if that's true, we are going to see Najee explode. Being that his rushing efficiency was pretty low in the goal line, I think he only scored 
I want to say seven rushing touchdowns last year, which is pretty low for someone who finishes the RB3 or RB4. If the Steelers are going to continue to run the ball a lot, which it seems like they're going to, even though they drafted Kenny Pickett, they also drafted George Pickens. They traded Juju. They have Deontay Johnson, and they do have... um. They drafted another receiver whose name's escaping me. It's not Alex Collins, I don't think. Um, but I do think the way that Najee's going to be used in the passing game is they're going to target the middle of the field a lot. That's where Kenny Pickett is strongest, throwing at the middle of the field. And Najee led the league, I think, in running backs with 94 targets. I don't see him having another 94 target season. But if his rushing touchdown efficiency increases, and let's say he sees a 74 targets, will take away 20 targets for whatever reason, he's going to be the RB1 this year. If he weighs 244 pounds, good luck stopping Najee Harris in the Steelers run game. At the RB3, I have Jonathan Taylor. And I think Jonathan Taylor realistically should have finished as the RB3 last year. And my case being is Derrick Henry was on pace for like 2,200 million rushing t- yards. He also was seeing the most yards attempts per game in his entire career. He had nine touchdowns. Ten touchdowns through like five weeks. Derrick Henry was going to be the RB1 by such a fat margin that Jonathan Taylor would have finished as the RB2 with like a 50-point plus gap. Like, it was insane, the pace Derrick Henry was on. He gets hurt. Then you have Austin Eckler, who finished as the RB2. Only, I think, 20 or some points behind Jonathan Taylor. And Jonathan Taylor finishes the RB1. And I think out of all of the RB1s over, like, since 2015, he had, like, the 19th highest points per game, if that makes sense. I saw it on Instagram today, and... If that's true, I am very not scared of Jonathan Taylor, but I think the point remains that they did trade for Matt Ryan and they're trying to improve their improve their passing offense. And one of the things that scares me is Taylor didn't see a lot of passing volume last year in an RPO style offense with Carson Wentz. If you think the Colts are going to run an RPO style offense with crusty Matt Ryan, whose knees might explode on impact if he tries to run for a yard, you are out of your mind. And I do think with a more straightforward style offense, a lot of those design targets to the backfield are going to go to Neheim Hines instead of Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor will catch passes, but I do not see his passing volume increasing any And if it does, I don't think it'll be by a good enough margin to put him back in the RB1 conversation in 2022. My RB2 this year is Christian McCaffrey. He finished as RB44 in standard and RB38 in PPR, which is actually nuts because I think he only played four weeks, which is insane. Um, I mean, realistically, yo, like, McCaffrey is a cheat code. Like, I don't really know what else to say about him besides if he's playing, you you have the best player in fantasy on your team just because of the offense he's in and the workload he carries. They did draft, if you followed the mock draft cha- mock draft videos on this channel, you know that I think Kemakwanu might have been the best prospect in the entire draft. And the uh, Panthers got him at six, being that the Giants opted to take Kayvon Thibodeau over a draft prospect, knowing that all three were still on the board and one would be there at seven. The Panthers went ahead and took a Kemakwanu, who, in my opinion, is the best run-blocking prospect of all time. Like, I don't think it's really close. What he can do, he just like Thanos snaps people out of a play in the run game. Like they're just gone and he just will make sure that they never, ever see the light of day ever again. They've upgraded their O-line with a run blocking guard and center and Austin Corbett and Bradley Bozeman. And when healthy, he has the most volume and opportunity of any player in fantasy. And it's like literally not even close. If you're worried about McCaffrey's injuries, like I am, I consistently draft McCaffrey and fleece someone for him every single year because I understand the value he holds and I don't like the risk. I adopt the risk when I draft him, but I sh- get rid of that risk when I trade him for a Jonathan Taylor and David Montgomery package. McCaffrey has at least two injuries a year. Last year, he had a high uh, a thigh ham, a thigh hamstring and ankle sprain. He had three different types of sprains. Both put him on IR both times, which thus ended his 2021 campaign. I like McCaffrey. It's just a question of do you want to gamble on his health? 
And coming in at number one, I have Derrick Henry. And I know I'm in a minority in this, but I do think Derrick Henry is in the top running back of all time conversation. I don't think he's number the best running back of all time. I think had he played all 17 games last season, it would have been a way closer than it is. But I do think he definitely is top five all time as of right now. And whether people want to admit that or not, like when we look back at Henry's career 10 years from now, Lord willing, we're going to be like, damn, this dude was not real. Like, tw- like Derrick Henry finishes the RB14 in standard in 21 in PPR. Right now, his ADP has him as the RB4 overall, fifth overall player. They did lose Pro Bowl guard in Roger Saffold, who's a great run blocker. Um, he did have Liz Frank injury at, during last season. I forget which week. I think it was week eight. Um, and that sidelined him for the entirety of the year until he came back in the playoffs. Uh, like, I don't think it's it's real. Like, people want to say Nick Chubb is the best pure runner in the NFL. Like, Derrick Henry doesn't exist. Like, I understand Nick Chubb is great. I love Nick Chubb. But he's not anything compared to Derrick Henry. Like, you could argue if Nick Chubb had the volume Henry did, would the numbers be similar? They might be. But Nick Chubb's body and his knee that really people, the reason he fell to the second round was because his knee exploded his last year at Georgia. People didn't think Nick Chubb was even going to play, like be a starter or be anything that Nick Chubb is that he is today. If that makes sense. Um, I think the Titans are supreme cheeks and one of the most overrated teams in the league. I love the Titans. It's not any hate towards the Titans. I just think trading AJ Brown in hopes that your rookie is going to be AJ Brown is the dumbest thing in the most backwards logic. Why would you trade what you have in hopes that something new will be what you had? That doesn't even make sense. Ryan Tannehill is Supreme cheeks. He is so bad. And again, nothing against Ryan Tannehill, but he constantly loses them games. And Derrick Henry was getting more targets in 2021 than he did in his entire career. And I don't think that trend is going to, I think he's going to see a target progression in 2022 now that Traylon, uh, now that Traylon Burks is there, Julio Jones is gone, and AJ Brown is gone, Ryan Tannehill only has familiarity with one receiver on this roster, and that is Derrick Henry. Um, but anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know what you think of my rankings in the comments. I have uh, RB my running back top twenty, which will be eleven through twenty, and I'll, that'll be posted tomorrow, um, Wednesday the eighth. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Let me know who got left out. Let me know who got stubbed. And let me know what you would change and who your RB1 or you or, or who your top 10 RBs for uh, 2022 redraft leagues are in this year. Anyway, grow a mustache, become a problem, get in the gym. I'll catch you next week. Peace.